I wanted to put, it, put together uh, a video on our capstone uh, help inbox as well as um, how to create a unique link uh, for someone that's moved on to the capstone project that's course complete that would have otherwise had OGTs but uh, is going to move on to the capstone project. We've been getting a pretty significant influx of emails and we just need some help uh, to kind of feel those. There's a pretty systematic uh, way to reply to most folks. They have similar questions oftentimes. Um, and then we just need uh, not, uh, I'm sorry, we also need uh, some assistance with creating the unique capstone link uh, for each student that moves on to the project and for that to be uh, sent out to them. So uh, these would be two very helpful areas. I'm going to share my screen and we'll look at um, the help, uh, I'm sorry, the helpline email that we've set up to respond to any uh, capstone related questions. Um, just what the, the folks that have received the capstone have gotten so far from a messaging standpoint. Uh, also common questions and responses that we've run into uh, up to this point. And then just quickly going through the process of creating uh, a unique capstone link uh, that can be sent um, to each student that would uh, be ready for the project. We will uh, be adding those names to uh, the uh, the hot list 2020 under the OGT only tab, but we'll go over that. So let me share my screen so we can uh, dive in to how all this is going to work. All right, so let me just make sure I've got everything running smoothly. Okay. Just wanted to make sure um, I was on the right screen before we went too far with it. So um, the first thing that I want to take a look at is uh, a, a document that I created that has kind of a breakdown of a how to log into uh, the the capstone uh, help desk or helpline that we've created. So uh, we'll look at that also. Uh, a template for people that will be getting a link to uh, the capstone project and then just some of the communiques that we've uh, sent out so far and then finally at the bottom common questions and responses that uh, you know uh, have been frequently sent out so start at the very top so we created uh, a special gmail email it's uh, helpline at academicincubator.com. Just wanted to create kind of a, a community inbox for our team um, so folks could help respond to any messages uh, that uh, students would send in regarding just needing help or uh, that we could also outbound send them the project. So Basically, it's a Gmail email, the username, again, helpline at academicincubator.com. You would log into this just like you would log into any Google email. Here's the password below. Um, that will get you into the uh, inbox area uh, for the email. Um, this is the template we use. So essentially, hi, whomever, this wording, and then within uh, this email, we insert the unique link. We'll go over uh, how that link's created in a bit, but this is the template uh, to send out folks uh, the capstone link. And it also just gives a good overall idea of what the project expectations are, uh, et cetera. And again, it emphasizes something that we'll, go, we'll touch on again in the commonly asked questions that people have been sending in. Um, Please be aware, you must complete the entire capstone project regardless of the amount of OGTs you need to pass. Even though we send that to each student that gets on this, inevitably they seem to always, well, not always, but a number of folks have said, well, I just had one OGT to do. Do I need to do the entire capstone? 
the project, or I'm sorry, the uh, reply is just very simply, yes, you need to do uh, uh, all the sections of the capstone project. Um, I think another big thing is we want people doing original work, so no copy paste. Um, it's going to take multiple revisions, uh, so on and so forth. Just basically the wording in here is to uh, hopefully encourage their very best work. So uh, that's the template. Again, just inserting the unique link in there. I'll show in a moment um, how to do that. After the first day, uh, which was actually this Tuesday, I think it was the 28th, uh, we sent out this message. Essentially, the, the important thing to know from this message is we let the students know we'll be reviewing this on kind of regular school days. Uh, we'll start around 7.15 a.m. We'll end around 3.15 p.m. Um, that it's going to take approximately 24 hours uh, if it's on a school day um, to get one of your sections reviewed. So uh, the writing section is the first section in the project. If somebody turns it in and is expecting like a full tilt response an hour later, we just wanted to uh, put the response time within um, just a standard that they could they could uh, wrap their arms around. Um, so yeah, I mean that was one of the big points of this. Uh, also, that you know um, we'll only be looking at one section at a time. Obviously, it's an open Google Doc. They can do all the sections of the project, um, but our team will only review and give feedback on one section at a time. Feedback will be given until the student in the reviewer's opinion has passed that section, and then we'll move on, <clears throat> pardon me, we'll move on to review uh, any of the other sections. So I think this email was to kind of set that standard and give parameters in terms of expected response time um uh, yeah so that was that one the second day um just kind of reinforcing uh some of the same concepts wanting to let people know that in um some circum uh, some circumstances this project's replacing five ogts so giving your best work no one sentence answers really expecting uh, two or three paragraph responses, thoughtful, detailed, supported statements, uh, et cetera. Uh, this was kind of in response to some people saying, again, hey, you know, I only had one OGT to do. Why do I need to do all five of these sections? We just tried to give a little bit of context, uh, you know, without just saying, hey, this is the way we're going about things, live with it. Um, just try to give again a bit of context so that's the gist of the first uh two emails we sent that out on day one was tuesday and then day two was yesterday wednesday those went out so you know no biggie most people doing exceptionally well i think we've had probably hmm, 40 people turn in at least one section of the project so I would say it's going quite well, but wanting to set the tone that we expect, you know, expect the students to really put uh, their best work into this and um, just giving them a feel for the timeline to expect response. All right, uh, commonly uh, asked questions and just kind of the standard answer to give. Obviously, things are going to fall outside of these parameters, but there's three really common questions that people ask. Um, First, my link's not working. Um, typically, I don't know. Uh, I think we sent out a link initially um, where what, for whatever reason, some of the URL to the link was cut off. I really suggest just copying and pasting the link uh, and I'll show where those are at uh, in just a moment. I really suggest copying and pasting the link and just resending it. Um, that tends to work like 98% of the time. And then also, sometimes people will say the link doesn't work because there's uh, a GIF that shows that if you click uh, this yellow highlighted uh, link below, this kind of video looking thing, 
it opens up first instruction. So I tried to detail that. So we're sorry to hear the link's not working. Please try this link, copy paste the link in for their unique project. Also, once the capstone project loads, remember to click the yellow highlighted link that says click here for first instruction. Sometimes people are trying to click on the uh, GIF uh, versus click on this yellow banner or yellow highlighted section below that actually does take them to a video uh, that explains how to um, use or uh, the, to basically do the project. Uh, so yeah. The other one is um, people ask when the due date is. I, I, I take this really more as not when the final due date like is, but basically when do I have, the, have to have this project done in order to be considered uh, for any upcoming graduation ceremony. Um, so the answer to that is you need to have the capstone project completed and approved by the capstone committee by June 5th in order to participate in the summer graduation ceremony. Somebody may respond and say, oh no, I wasn't worried about the graduation ceremony. I just mean, when's the last day I can do it? Well, that answer is actually June 30th. Uh, but again, I think most people are really asking to say, hey, when do I have to have this done in order to participate in the graduation ceremony? I think it's a perfectly suitable answer to give the fifth, um, certainly gives them a decent amount of time since today's April 30th, uh, where they're not rushing, but uh, yeah, still gives them a good parameter. So uh, that's that, that answer. And I know I touched on this above, but <laughs> yet people ask it, do I need to do all the sections of the capstone project? Yes, all sections of the capstone project need to be completed, again, regardless of the amount of OGTs you needed to pass. Um, we can get into a conversation on why, but that's just what we're doing. Um, yeah, you know, so that those are the three most common questions. Again, stuff will come in that, um, is outside of those parameters, but that's generally it or versions of uh, those three questions. If you run into something super sticky that's very hard to solve, definitely you can let me know. I'll be glad to uh, provide input and thought. Um, so that's that. Okay. Um, where, and I can see I didn't bring over one tab that I need. Um, where uh, do you create uh, the unique capstone link for uh, a student? Okay, so great question. Um, we made this 22 plus capstone uh, master folder. This basically is uh, holding all the ca unique capstone projects um, for all the students that are currently on uh, capstone. So within the folder, we basically uh, have uh, a document that's designed to be replicated or it's kind of our um, copy that we use. So within this master folder, and I'll make sure this is shared with you, but within the master folder uh, is a uh, doc that obviously is the capstone project that's uh, titled capstone project uh, hyphen template. Um, so with this capstone project hyphen template, we'll simply do what you would do for uh, any Google Doc to make a copy. We'll go to the file, make a copy. Um, what we do is we take off, obviously, the copy of and just leave student capstone project. And then I'm, I'm not going to change this, but you would just type in the student's name. So I don't know. We could just put in uh, Tony Smith if that was the person's name you would say okay and make the copy. Um, I, I, I'm, hey, what the heck, I'm just gonna go ahead and make a copy just to walk this all the way through. So we made a copy of the uh, original one, the student capstone project uh, dash template. Now we made our Tony Smith version. Um, the key thing for uh, doing this, once you make the copy for that student, is to modify the sharing settings. We want the student to have editing privilege on their unique link. So we're going to go to sharing. And it defaulted to edit because uh, I would say almost every other document in that particular folder 
is set to um, give editing privilege to who, whomever has the link and it does not require sign in. Um, but just make sure that that's the case. So obviously this one is anyone with a link uh, can edit. That's good. That's what we want. So we're going to copy that even though, again, obviously there's not a Tony Smith or at least not at this time. We want to copy from the template, make a copy, um, give it the student capstone. Uh, let's see, whatever the name is here. Student capstone project dash, whatever the student's name is. Again, make sure that the sharing settings are correct. Anyone with a link can edit is what we want. We want to copy that link. Then once the link is copied on the hot list, pardon me, on the hot list, again, Tony Smith's not on here, but if he were, we would write in Tony Smith. We would find Tony Smith's uh, phone number and email from uh, the enrollment sheet or wherever we, you know, going into the Google Drive, whatever, put in his phone number, email, and then his capstone link would go in uh, the capstone link column here. So what we're looking for is the student's name, but it's already going to be there. Um, student's name, make sure that the phone number and email get filled in, and then um, placing the, uh, the capstone link in the capstone column. Again, you won't have to determine who's done and needs the capstone link, but you do have to look at the hot list, uh, OGT only tab down at the bottom uh, to determine like, okay, who's ready to receive a link, okay? Um, so yeah, if that could be done, that would be immensely helpful. Um, just jumping into the inbox, uh, you know, it, it's really important that the inbox just is kept an eye on between, you know, 7.15 a.m. and 3.15 p.m. Uh, again, if something goes well beyond the parameters of some of the basic QA and it's really confusing on maybe the best way to respond, certainly let me know. Uh, but we're looking at, um, you know, responding to messages that come into this um, helpline uh, email. And again, it is uh, a Google-based email, even though it's an academic incubator um, finish uh, to the URL. Um, yeah, so again, context of the messages that have gone out to the students uh, previous to this are just basically that we're not going to check an email, or I'm sorry, we're not going to get feedback on your project at 10 p.m. at night. You know, the feedback's going to happen between 7.15 a.m. and 3.15 p.m. It takes about a day for our reviewers to uh, share feedback with you. Um, that you have to do all five sections, et cetera. So that's basically it. Uh, in terms of making a new uh, link for somebody to start on Capstone, uh, again, making a copy of this particular document then renaming it uh, student capstone project type and whatever the student's name is, adjusting those sharing settings, putting uh, that's, I'm sorry, again, not putting the name, but putting the student's uh, phone number and email in, as well as a link uh, to the capstone project. And um, emailing, I'm sorry, the final step is emailing that link uh, to the student. Um, I'm actually glad I'm thinking about these steps. So let's pretend and again in the Tony Smith example, Tony Smith phone number, email, capstone link. We would email from uh, the helpline, <clears throat> pardon me, we would email from, so we're going to compose from uh, the helpline thing. I'm going to change this signature uh, piece down there. It's not applicable to what we're doing. So anyway, that will be taken out. But uh, Nonetheless, you put in a recipient's email address. Uh, the subject line can be 22 plus capstone project. And then you would put in again, if we're doing Tony Smith, hi, Tony. And then uh, in this document that I'll share with you, this capstone messages in common, uh, in common Q and A, we've got that template email, so you can just copy this guy. 
and then uh, paste it into your message. Remember that um, you'll need to insert the link that you created for them. Uh, I think we, you know, I had the link from the Tony Smith thing, but obviously you would have it on the sheet, but we would grab his link and uh, paste it in there. So just getting that out and putting the Tony link in there. So checking the helpline email that's connected to people's capstone questions. You've got kind of the common things that people want to know about uh, how you have the information on how to uh, uh, create a unique link uh, for a student that would be working on capstone that needs it. And then yes, emailing them uh, through the helpline uh, email address, um, just so that's kind of compartmentalized in its uh, own inbox. Uh, so yeah, those are the items. So creating the capstone link, responding to uh, uh, any capstone related questions via this helpline email, and then sending out for people that are uh, new onto the project, uh, uh, that capstone link. So emailing it through the helpline to them. So yeah, I won't send that obviously. So that's, that's that. That would be incredibly helpful uh, for us, um, you know, to, to just be as responsive as possible to students uh, working on capstone. So the, yeah, that would be great. Thanks so much.